four. 972,394,100 billion three hundred ninety four million one hundred and uh, I was just making up a really big number. Okay, uh, Twitch says we are live. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're going to continue today on um, trying to uh, trying to figure out solar and well, let's see, whatever this says, we're doing that. Um, Jovian lunar eclipses, which is actually in general eclipses across the uh, the solar system. Um, now, previously we had gotten very far in a method that I had created. Um, which is known as uh, the sucky method, it turns out. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up the diagram we have for that method. Um, or, or not, you know, whatever. Um, okay, here we are. And we can make it big. Ooh, that's not what I meant to do. Max spec. That's too big. Let me fix that real quick. Um, help. How do we have? How do we make it back to the original size? Okay, that kind of sucked. Let me do that again, sorry. Okay, this diagram here. And my idea was that we, uh, we take uh, Q, T, and S, the centers of the three spheres, put them in a plane, and then make the Q to S, the viewer to the sun, the straight X axis, and then just keep T in the X, Y plane. That actually is not a terrible idea, but it turns out there's something called, bas oh, and we had it here too, by the way. There's something called bacillian elements, uh, B, and I think I have, uh, and I've clearly said here screw bessel, which would imply from this wording that we're not going to use them. Um, however, it turns out between the time I wrote that and now, I've decided that they actually are a pretty good idea, so we maybe should actually use them. Um, and eventually, so here is, um, here's how the bacillian elements work. We're not going to actually use this exact method, we're going to use something similar. Um, the Basilian elements are similar to what I did, except they've decided that they want to make uh, S and T on the x-axis, or, you know, put S and T on the x-axis, or at least make the line between S and T parallel to the x-axis, and then um, let Q be the sort of the outlier, um, sort of the outlier there. And, um, and then it turns out the math is slightly easier there. Uh, it I mean, and I actually looked into this. We could modify the method we're using now uh, to, to do what they want. I mean, we, they basically draw a line from S through T, which because of the way Basilian elements work, Basilian elements work, is, um, is a straight line in the sense that it's parallel to the x-axis. We do keep Q at the origin in, in their system as well. Um, so in our system, we still could actually look at the line between Q, uh, S, and T, and the, and the lines that create the umbra and the penumbra. Um, but it turns out they will have formulas that are slightly more complicated uh, than they would in using Besselian. I need to figure out how to say that word, uh, Besselian elements. Um, so I, I was sort of divided as to whether or not to, um, you know, modify our technique or use our technique in and continue with it, we're pretty close, um, and just modify it so that it doesn't need to actually use a hunting method to find the maximum in eclipse. It can just compute whether or not there is an eclipse directly. Um, but it turns out uh, then I, and so, or going all the way over to the, uh, to the Basilian uh, method, which is actually sort of a binary method, although we can, we can tweak it so it's non-binary. Um, so we can tweak it so that it tells you how close you are. Hopefully, I mean, I haven't done it. Hopefully, you can tell, like, if you're close to an eclipse without actually being on an eclipse, in an eclipse state. Uh, th and that's important because we're using GFQ, the, the function that uh, C Spice gives us, or actually, you know, kind of, um, the geometry finder of C Spice to find out when there's eclipses, and that needs a continuous variable, although it will work with a binary variable. There is a version that works with a binary variable. Uh, I'm not sure I want to use that version because um, we're also sort of concerned with partial eclipses, so there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. So originally I was going to use the ternary method to find the local minimum on the sphere that we, were, uh, that we had drawn, meaning the, uh, the, the Q sphere here, from here to here, find where the minimum and maximum eclipse were. Uh, we've already computed that they would necessarily occur at the equator in this, in this orientation. Um, we're not going to do that. Uh, also, I'm going to say no for now, Bessel. Let me just say no Bessel, which, no, let me do no Bessel. So we're going to uh, ignore this because we're using the Basilian method. Another thing we could have done is we don't really want to compute the minimum and maximum eclipse when there's no eclipse even nearby. 
So we could have computed the maximum angular radii and the minimum angular separation that could possibly be viewed on the planet, even if it wasn't from the same point. And, you know, say there's, we're not even close to an eclipse now without having to compute the minimum and maximum eclipse, which would still exist, but the numbers would be both be very high and not be very useful. We're not going to do that either. Um, yesterday, we, uh, yesterday, love was such an easy game to play, but also... Yesterday, we looked at, we had problems that because the, uh, the, the method we were using found the beginning and the end of the eclipse, but not the middle. And so what I was going to do is I was going to look at the, um, the middle part of the eclipse and see, uh, you know, why it didn't catch the maximum and minimum. My guess is that the max doesn't occur either at ni negative 90 longitude, positive 90 longitude, or zero longitude. It occurs somewhere in between, and we're sort of skipping over it. We're not going to do that either. Then we were going to look for a closed form formula for where theta is, th where the eclipse is maximal uh, by using, it should be doable actually, but no, we're not going to do that. Um, so the one thing we said we're not going to do in this full file, we're going to do it. We're going to do the decimal. Um, I'd also plan to fix the debug function, which currently doesn't do what it says it does. At some point, I do need to ask the Mathematica group if we can get Mathematica to give one answer when it can't get all the answers. Blah, 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 because a lot of this stuff has now been gradients. We already did it. So a lot of this stuff is now uh, obsolete. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is, um, and by the way, I know you're thinking, if you're at a project and you've worked really hard on it, and you're really close to the finish, and, um, you know, with just a little bit more work, and then someone comes up with a new and totally different method, uh, shouldn't you just complete the small amount of work to finish the project the way you've been doing it, uh, instead of going with a totally new method, which is going to require a lot more work? And the answer to that is that actually in a, um, in a professional environment, you probably would because the product is important. Uh, for me, the purpose of this stream is to learn. And I do mean for me to learn, not for you to learn. I don't give a rat's ass about you guys. Sorry. Um, for me to learn. So I'm actually very excited about uh, learning this method. It is going to take some more time. And it's also going to do something that we're also going to um, learn a few more things along the way, kind of, um, or I will at least. Uh, and that 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 will be uh, that will be uh, maybe useful. I don't really care. Um, now, one thing we've done previously, and we can continue doing here, is we can continue uh, pretending we're in a in a planar situation. I mean, very close to that, we can, because this, it turns out, will be a circle, and the penumbra will also be sort of a circle. We'll we'll look at it in more detail here in just a second. But again, uh, the, the the big win here of drawing your own axis system. Uh, is that you can uh, you can choose things to be on straight lines. I just happened to choose a straight line that I think was a bad idea. I chose the the planet to the sun instead of the planet to the, the sun to the eclipsing body. Um, which, by the way, I think I'm being inconsistent because I I think I'm, I've used both planet and moon interchangeably. Uh, one to mean the thing that's eclipsing and the other to mean the thing that's being eclipsed. I'll try to clarify that a little bit as we go along. Now, previously we used um, a Mathix to draw this diagram. Uh, several problems with Mathix, uh, that it sucks, bas basically. Also, if you want to draw more elements, you have to basically tweak the code and rerun it. Um, so a, s a program I discovered earlier, and I might have actually mentioned earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this. We'll keep this. This is going to be important. And what the hell? Oh, we, we need that. We want that. Well, we'll need that later. And I think we're going to keep this. And a program I mentioned earlier that we're going to use now is called GeoGebra. And I think, start graphing, and I could sign in if I wanted to. I'm not going to. Uh, GeoGebra is actually kind of nice because, and whatever interface I'm using here is not cool. But you can actually draw like circles and, st oh here it is, draw shapes. Um, well clearly I have no idea what the hell I'm doing here. Um, yeah. Uh, let me go to a slightly better, uh, if you go to this URL instead, I want to leave the page. Uh, you get, you have a slightly better interface to the drawing interface of GeoGebra, and we will make this tiny because, well, we, we, we might need it at some point, but we'll make it tiny for right now. Um, you can download GeoGebra and install it on your own machine. I'm not doing that right now. Um, one bugaboo that I learned about earlier today is that it is kind of open source. Their uh, licensing language is very confusing. It says that it's GPL v3 for uh, non-commercial users, but not for commercial users. However, 
if you use it as a non-commercial user under GPVL3, GPVL3 automatically gets rid of any other restrictions in the license. So you can use it commercially. Um, I'm not going to get too involved in that. Uh, I'm going to say this use is non-commercial, uh, even though it might not be. And if the lawyers come after me, I will kill them. Uh, which is okay, because lawyers aren't humans and uh, you can kill them. Uh, but, but I will be using this. This is actually nicer. Uh, it would be nicer to use something that is like patently open source and you don't you have to worry about this kind of crap. But, um, you know, we'll do what we can here. So we're going to draw a new diagram here. We're still going to have the Earth um, uh, here at zero, zero. Hopefully we are... We'll make the Earth about size one, because that's, that's a good size for the Earth. Um, one ugliness with this thing is if you don't re-choose it... Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, the Earth, as we all know, is blue. And actually, this is the planet that's going to be eclipsed. And I think I can clearly not do that. There should be a way to... Um, change it so it's actually f b blue filled. Um, let's use this sort of nice... No, 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 no. Um, okay, how do I change the freaking... Oh, okay. Oh, oh, cool! So you can make the earth slightly opaque. Uh, wait, no, stop doing that. Uh, we'll use this color for the earth and we will make it, just like the real earth, semi-transparent. I don't actually know if the real Earth is semi-transparent. It might be for somebody who can see into that region. Okay, and maybe I can move point B right there so we have it fixed there. Okay, so now we're going to draw the moon in... It's going to be... It's going to be white, which will, will still be visible, actually. And remember, we're drawing this now so that the Earth is at the origin, but the x-axis will be parallel to the line between the moon and the sun. So we're going to draw them up here at 1 which I think will give us enough of, a, of room to, um, Jesus Christ. Uh, on my other machine, that doesn't come up like that. So we're going to draw the moon here as being tiny, which the moon actually is. And then we're going to draw the sun here as being big, because, as you may know, you got to be a little bit careful here, because I'm trying to model a, um, a total eclipse, not an annular eclipse, so this may do something funky. So now let's go ahead and... Uh, the circle D, we'll color it white, uh, which seems weird, but it will wipe out the background. Um, it will wipe out. It, there, it does meaningful to make something white um, because it'll wi partly wipe wipe out the background. So we'll do this. Oh, that's, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I guess we'll do this. Nope, I don't want to do that. That's one of the problems with this thing. I'm sure there's a clever way to tell it uh, that you don't want to stick with the same tool as previously. And I've just made the sun white for some reason. Oh, no, I've made the moon white, and I've given it a white border as well, which is really terrible of me, so let me fix that. Um, circle AB. I've apparently gotten rid of circle this guy. Um, so not my, not my brightest move. All right. So go to C and D again. We're going to draw, redraw this. Before we do that, let's go ahead and make the sun the color we expect it to be, which is purple, if you have been using a lot of drugs. Or just have a weird kind of color blindness. So we will go ahead and make the sun... Um, wow, these are some strange shades of yellow. Where's pure yellow? That's close enough. We will make it also like the real sun, 50% transparent. Um, remember, you can look directly at the sun. And if you believe that, just, you're stupid. So don't really do that. Okay. Because um, someone, someone's going to do it, and I'm going to get in trouble for, for saying it, but I'm disclaiming it now. Okay, that's the moon. Um, I think white's going to be difficult, so we're going to go ahead and use the fact that the moon is made out of green cheese to color it green. So the color here is going to be, this is sort of a good green cheesy color, like that. Okay, fantastic. And yes, always remember to go back to the freaking hell, to the mouse. So this is looking pretty good here. Um, I could probably zoom in a little bit. Oh, wow, it's pretty smooth. Okay, this is very nice here. We will go ahead and move point D so it is like this. There's really no reason to do this, but 
Um, I'm bored. Um, so now we're going to try to draw the umbral cone, the cone of the eclipse. Uh, now one sort of nice thing would be if I were logged in or if I had downloaded it, I could, in fact, uh, save this drawing. But I mean, we're on video, so, you know. Um, hello to the users, one user in chat if you're a real person. And even if you're not, hello. So now we're going to draw the umbral cone, which we're going to be really careful about because, um, and because partly because it doesn't. No, um, because we draw the umbral cone from where this, which is the x-axis, hits the y-axis, which is the one that goes through the center of the Earth. Um, there's an issue here that we're going to come up with here, and okay, and I've drawn it so there's only an annular eclipse. So this is this is the one issue. This is an issue I didn't anticipate. Let me go ahead and get rid of that real quick. If I can figure out how, there should be a way to just switch really quickly between those two. Um, so I'm going to make the sun a little bit smaller. Of course, none of this is to scale. I mean, the sun is a bajillion times bigger than the Earth, and now I've got the Earth too big. But that doesn't really matter because the the scales are terrible, by the way, right now. So this is, we're just using Earth, Sun, Moon as an example. Um, this is clearly nowhere near that. This might be the, you know, I honestly, I don't think there's anything in the solar system that looks like this because no, the sun is huge compared to everything else. But it's also really far away, so it's hard to draw that way. Um, so let's see if this does what I want, which is more specifically draw the umbral cone. Jesus Christ, stop bringing up menus. Um, the umbral cone, which is uh, this sucker here. And in this case, we have, uh, there we go. That's nice. I like that. I'm going to move this so it is um, right there. No, I didn't. I wasn't trying to create a new point piece of stupidness. Be gone, point I. I was trying to move point H. There we go. Um, so where it's tangent. There's an issue here that we're going to deal with in just a minute. Oh, there's no snap to grid? Okay. Uh, and this is one half of the umbral cone. The other half of the umbral cone, God willing. Okay, now that I want a line, I can't get one, can I? Um, from here through the... Damn it! Uh. Actually, I'm pretty sure we can do this without... Um, Let's see. Oh, so I guess we do need a point up here because we don't already have one. Um, can I do a snap to grid here? I don't. I really don't know. Um, it probably is available under the settings somewhere. Um, I can fix the object. All right. Th this is just a diagram, so we're not that concerned. Okay. So the umbral cone goes from there. from G through point. And in this case, I think we can actually stabilize it because I actually have a point there. So this here thing is the umbral cone. And the way I've drawn it, um, no part of the Earth is, in, in an, is currently within an eclipse. That was brilliant of me. Um, um, so maybe this tiny part here. Let me see if I can improve that slightly. Um, so we do have an eclipse going on. And then I'm going to draw the penumbral cone as well, which is where there's a partial eclipse. Um, now you'll notice in this case that it eclipses the entire sun, but it also eclipses a little bit more. Realistically, this almost never, this can't happen because the moon is almost exactly the same angular size as the sun. Um, but let me move these around a little tiny bit here. And again, this is just a diagram, but I think it can be out. Freaking hell, man. Okay, well, uh, maybe this thing back here can actually be useful. So I'm going to take point C. That's a sucker I want to move. Apparently, I cannot do that. Apparently, I cannot change where point C is. Without, well, I can. Oh, if I change where point C is, I get it. I have to change where point D is, otherwise the circle is no longer the circle. So the circle appears to be... Um, at 30.5, roughly speaking. Just put it there now. 
Uh, so if I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, this down to 0 0.5, I need to move this down to 0. That's the issue here. Okay, fantastic. And of course, um, bec because we're using the Basilian method, point E must also move... Okay. We're just going to do this the hard way. Point E must also move down to point 0.5. They, they have to be in the same... Um, they have to be in the same x value. And in this case, I guess this will move down to minus 0.5. Okay. And then we'll need to move this line to be okay. Now it's looking kind of parallel, which I don't really like, but we'll, we'll deal with it. And then I need to move this. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I need to move g to be down at 0.5 because the we're all, we always draw it from the the point where the x-axis uh the the line meets the x-axis so g needs to move down now or g doesn't need to move at all that's really up to g let's see if we can move g this way uh oh because g is currently defined as an intersection of two things so that's not good so let's get rid of um can't get rid of point d can get rid of point h so we did, well, don't need it uh, we can get rid of this line. I don't know if we, can, we can't. Let's see. I don't want to get rid of point D. I'm pretty sure that's the thing that's defining the circle that I have. Um, okay, good. Got rid of point G. So now we want to draw a line from uh, the half point. I'm kind of beginning to wish I made everything twice the size, but I'm not going to do that. I could. New... Okay, um, okay, no. Um, have I, have I effed this up because I, it, it's going to be a snap to grid? Um, let's see. All right, what the hell? Let's double everything in size. And that way I can put my, the, the intersection point will be at one. So the earth, nope, 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 don't mean to do that. Undo. Oh, good. There's no undo. Oh, there is. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and move point B. Okay, no. Oh, I know what's wrong. Undo? Undo is good. Um, let's go ahead and move this point B to down here, making the circle twice as big. I get it. Um, move the center of this to 1. It's fine. And make that twice as big. Move the center of this to 1 and make this not quite twice as big. Um, Jesus Christ. No, okay. Oh, now it's, now it's, <laughs> we have some ugliness is going on. Um, let's, let's zoom out a little, let's make this a little bit better. Uh, so now we want this at one. Uh, and we want this to remain at one. And why are we not showing one? Okay. Y, oh, Y, uh, so we want it at 12, comma, 1. Uh, come on, 1 is still a grid line. And we want this has to have the center of 1 also, and... Ah, uh, that actually looks pretty good. That's actually pretty realistic for, for... I mean, nowhere near the real size, but... But it's much closer to the real size than, um, than anything else. So we are going to resume doing some actual math here in a minute, but not with mathics necessarily. So this is, a, this is a pretty good looking diagram here. So now, let's draw the umbral shadow as measured flipping hell from here. Yay! And once again, I made the sun too big. All right, let's shrink down the sun. Or oh, I can make the moon bigger. I think, though, in this case, I'm going to shrink down the sun. Okay. Um, hopefully that'll give me an umbral cone. Why does it always... I think I know why it's doing that, actually. Um, so, drawing a line. Actually, this one will be easier to draw because this one is going to go right through D. Point J. Okay, point J actually needs to be... I don't know when this decides to, to do snap grids and non-snap grids. But point J is going to be at 0, 1. Okay. And point... That was interesting. 
Okay, point J is going to be, it apparently it doesn't want to be at zero, 1. But quite sadly, you can't have everything you want, and in particular, you can't have this. Okay. And then... Okay, I don't really need point K. Point K be gone. And now I can draw my line from J through D. That's the lower half of the, the umbral cone. And stop doing that. I don't know what the hell this is. It worries me a little bit. Okay. Do I need to make the sun even smaller? Because yeah, it's kind of peeking out there. Ah, why they? All right. Okay, I do need to make the sun a little bit smaller. Hopefully this will let me do it in a non goofy way. Okay, and then we need a line from J to the top of this, which is not a well. Okay, awesome. Um, I don't think we need point K. And I'm wrong. Well, we don't really need it because we want the line to go through. Um, there. Okay, why do we have. Okay, we do need point L, unfortunately, because. Um, well, we can move it. The frip. Okay, sorry. We need to go into move point mode. Remove point L. So it is um, right there. And, that, and what the hell is this? I don't know what the hell this is. It, it bugs me. Oh! Why do we have a point G? Point G, thou art not wanted here. I hope. Uh, it's the intersection of C and the Y axis. What is H then? Aha! Uh -huh. Same thing. Be gone, point G. We need you no more. Wait, what the hell happened? Did I make this really big? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, okay, so we have from the point where... Okay, point E, where the hell are you? All right, let's get our points fixed up here. Point E, you need to be on the x-axis. You need to be at basically 12, 1. That's where you need to be. Okay, well, that that's pretty darn close. It will fix you up, though, and make you exactly at 12, 1. Um... Moon, you need to be a little bit smaller. C needs to be at 4-1. How do I get a freaking snap to grid? I mean, there's probably a way. I just... I'm using this for, like, not not the first time, but very rarely do I use this. Okay, 4-1. D is at 4-0. I wish we could... I'm going to try... I'm going to try to save this. Let's see. So we have the... Um, If we move F to... See, F is right now at sort of an ugly place right now. But I think we need it to be there. I'm not going to try file save as, which is really weird, because um, we're not running it in a... Um, yep. Well... Give me one second. I think I actually might have a GeoGebra account. Stand by. Oh, I do. So let me just log into that. This is probably useful for other people too. So um, I think my username is there. Oh, oh, it is. And it almost was my password, but not quite. Okay. The first is that. I hope I got that right. Um, eclipses, and we'd be making this public, man. We don't, we don't give a rat's ass. Okay, so this is the umbral cone here. It touches the Earth here, 
And um, so now we can start uh, doing some computations, uh, as it were. Um, now, one issue that we had earlier that we still sort of have, I'm not sure how to address it exactly. Um, if we want to find this line, it's tangent to, uh, to the eclipsing object, not necessarily to the object being eclipsed, um, but, it's, but it's not necessarily um, perpendicular to the line that connects the two objects. This actually, there's a little bit of an arc sign there thing going on, uh, and we, we found that out last time. The problem here is, uh, and I guess we would have to do the arc sign from here, um, actually from there, yeah, from there like that. And, and the problem here is, what if we drew the umbral cone from different points? In other words, according to this, these points are eclipsed. But what if we went over here, drew our umbral cone, and it turns out that we're still in the umbral cone because we drew it from a different location? Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, but I will put it on the to-do list to look at, at probably at very low priority. And so to-do, a sine versus a tan, or for, uh, position from which umbral cone is drawn makes a difference. Now, keep in mind, we're assuming that planets are spherical, um, so we're not, we're not, and we're ignoring like travel time, but maybe that's usually not a big deal. So we're not actually going for that. We don't have that level of accuracy, really. Okay, so um, let's see. So we we're now in this frame where um, C and E are, are going to be on the, uh, going to be parallel to the x-axis, not on the x-axis. And I think I made a slight mistake here because there's no reason to believe that um, the moon is going to be exactly touching the x-axis. And, and that, is a, uh, that is a sort of a, there we go. And that is sort of an important point because um, we don't want, the situation will be different if the moon were touching. Um, except now I need to make the sun frickin' smaller again. When in doubt, make the sun as small as possible. Okay. So now we have an umbral cone, the moon's not touching the x-axis, the sun happens to go through the x-axis, not a big deal. So now how does all of this help us? Okay. Um, we can compute, we know where these bo bodies are. Now there's one other slight problem here, we're going to go back to sea spice in a minute, and we're going to run into a sort of the kind of problem you want to have. Um, hang on, I just got a Twitch invitation. Whoa. Okay. I, I don't know where the hell I'm going with it, but okay. Um, w we want to, so we want, we want the transformation that can make sure that these two points are parallel to the x-axis. In other words, the vector between, um, I guess I'm going to call it C, even though that's the name of the point, between C and E, w those are points. The vector between C and E is parallel to the x-axis. However, there's more than one way to do that because we haven't decided what we want to do with the y and z axes. To sort of, um, now there's se several ways to do this, but probably one of the nicer ways to do this is to, um, is to make the point on the z, on the uh, y-axis here significant. And I will make it so that this is the J2000 North Pole. In other words, x-axis is parallel to the two, um, to the two bodies and the uh, y-axis points towards the J2000 North Pole. Now some of you are going to point out that in the J2000 system, the z-axis already points to the North Pole, so moving it from the z to the y is kind of silly, uh, and, and that's sort of true, but I want to remain within the xy paradigm. I don't want to suddenly be calling this the z-axis, although that would be another way to do it. Um, so let's go ahead and do that over here in BC Lib. So a lot of this stuff is going to go away now. Um, the radii of all three objects which you don't need. Position from Q to S and T. And that, that is, um, uh, let's see. And I guess we're, need, we're going to need to compute the, um, the position from S to T. Um, actually, I'm not even sure we need these vectors anymore. Um, I mean, we probably will at some point. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but maybe we'll need them only after we rotate. Okay, so let's go ahead and create, um, let's go ahead and go here. 
uh, matrix that makes J2, uh, let's, the more important condition is matrix that makes a uh, vector from S to T parallel to x-axis and makes, um, and, and by the way, you rotations can never change the origin. That would require an affine transformation, which we're not doing. So we don't need to say, specify that Q, the center of Q remains at the origin. No matrix can change that. No, no rigid rotation can change that and makes the y-axis point to the J, J2000 North Pole. Okay, so that would be the uh, two-vector matrix. So first of all, we need to compute the um, position from S to T in this the, uh, in the J2000 frame. So let's call that, that's not very difficult, uh, vector from S to T. And just to be silly, we will call that... We're going to need to get rid of a lot of these variables. But for right now, it's going to be the S to 2 variable. And that is going to be... Um, oh. Yeah, I think we can do it. Um, okay. I'm dealing with pop-ups here. And I mean actual people popping up. They're very strange. Okay, so we want to know the position as viewed from S, uh, sorry, of S, ET, J2000, so you allow for light travel time, T, and put the result in S to T. That seemed like a little bit too easy. All right. Um, we now want the vector. Um, and I guess we're going to have to declare, uh, we're going to just have to declare a uh, the north pole vector because we can't put hard we can't put constant arrays into uh, into these functions from C spice uh, north and in the J two thousand frame this is zero zero one although there's a, there's a slight issue here but we'll, we'll ignore the, the we could make the zero zero qr but we want sort of a of matrix that has a norm of one so we're not going to mess with that so now what we want is um, our matrix which we're still going to call Matt because Matt's a good name. Um, so we want S to T, you've got to be careful here, to be parallel to the new. No. Okay, let's go ahead and look up the instructions for 2VEC. I think I'm, I need to do it in the order reverse of what I'm thinking, but it's not, not hard. Okay, find the trend, blah, 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 blah. Vector defining the principal axis. So that is definitely, oh, actually we have two of them, don't we? Um... So we can actually do either one first. Let's go ahead and do S to T will be the x-axis, and then north, uh, we will insist that north be in, um, the north vector be in the x-y plane, which will, because it's, uh, because it's uh, perpendicular, uh, can I do this? Um, okay, hang on, I might, I might not be able to do what I want here. Okay, um, so we have any three spheres in space here. Uh, we just have them sort of out somewhere. We find the plane that they're all in, that's doable. And we now want to rotate the axes so that, uh, one, well, we won't first do an Im implicit affine transformation by, um, by just basically deciding that the axis will be drawn, so Q uh, will go through one, one of them. Let's go ahead and go back to GeoGebra, shall we? I think I can do a new here. Yay, I can. Um, let's call this orientation, which sounds like it's something you do on the first day of uh, school. Okay, saving. Ooh, nice, shiny. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna be we're gonna be a little bit cheating here, but not too much. Um, we can choose our origin, okay, we can choose our origin so that our, um, so that Q is always at the center, that's not hard, well it is hard because they won't let me draw it, but it otherwise it's not hard, okay, that part's not difficult, 
Um, and uh, you know, I th I thought we could force it so that um, so that the North Pole would be. Whoops! Didn't mean to do that. Need a little bit of work on the interface here. Me personally, that Jesus Christ. Um, I was hoping that we could force the North Pole of the Earth uh, to be pointing straight up in the Y direction. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do that. We can guarantee that the North Pole of the Earth is in the um, XY plane, um, which is sort of nice because it it means, you know, otherwise the North Pole in theory could be outside of that plane. So we'll go ahead and keep the North Pole in the plane of uh, the XY plane, but it won't necessarily be pointing straight up the Y axis because there's no guarantee that's going to be perpendicular to, the, to what I did before. That that's going to be perpendicular to the line joining the two um, joining the two uh, points, the Sun and the Moon, or whatever. So that that's still okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to uh, transform the positions, um, and I think at this point we pretty much have to go from from point Q, um, because I, I'm, I'm almost sure you can't get away with not using point Q. Uh, let's see. So we have this. Uh, we can run the transform on S. Oh, right, right. Because our origin is uh, because our origin is Q. We really do need to do it. Okay. So we still need to compute the position from Q to S. And now that I'm being frisky here with this stuff. Let's go ahead and call this, um, not s pause, but uh, q to s. Oh, I see, because we're using the origin. Um, uh, let's go ahead and keep it s pause. Because if q is the origin, I don't necessarily want to make it seem like it's, it's a point that's not the origin. So we can do this, um, s to t. And I guess from here, we could have done a vector subtraction, but cum si, cum sa. OK. Uh, to J2000 North. Um, matrix to make S to T parallel to X axis. Oh. So th that's this sucker here. So we could vector, and that, that's good. We use the two vectors here. Position from Q to S and S to T. Apply matrix of rotation. Um, it'd be sort of nice if we could put S rot and T rot back into, um, back into S pause and T pause so we're not going crazy with the variables, not, but not a huge deal. So now that we've done this, we want to make sure that S rot and T rot will have an interesting property. They will both be, um, they will both have a Z val value of zero, uh, same X value, um, sorry, same Y value, different X values, because they will be parallel to the X axis. At least that's what I hope is going on here, but let's go ahead and check. And I guess we should probably label them. And I'm surprised I don't already have this printed out somewhere, so I'm kind of thinking that I probably do, and I just am repeating myself, but that's okay. Um, now, since we don't really care about the rest of this, we can actually do sort of a, a return zero here, um, which is a terrible way to comment out code. And I think the C compiler is going to complain that I have unreachable code, but I don't think it's going to stop me from actually running the program. Um, that is the hope, at least. Um, so let's see what this does. Um, um, excess elements in... Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Of course, north is going to be a three-element vector. I just minimized Emax for because my fingers are getting kind of. I'm, I'm on a regular keyboard, and my fingers are kind of getting. But I'm I'm, well, I'm old. Uh, okay, that actually worked. Um, I probably shouldn't act like I'm really super surprised by that, but I am. Okay. Um, hmm. This does not appear to be correct. Uh, these should have the same y value, and s should not be on the x-axis, unless I've done something wrong. 
which I guess I have. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and be careful here. So the vector from S to T, which I have computed as by, if you're standing on S in the J2000 coordinate system, and looking at T, that's that's the vector we need. We could also use get subtract get it by subtraction. Um, and uh, let's see. So S to T is going to be the x-axis. Um, yeah, this does not look like if you subtracted this, we would not be parallel to the the parallel to the x-axis would mean um, they would differ in they wouldn't differ in y value, so that's not happening here. The zero here is correct because they would remain on the um, they would remain uh, on the plane because that's how we defined our plane. Okay, so what's going wrong here? Um, and also, this shouldn't be on the x-axis. This should actually be above the x-axis, as viewed from an A. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the s to t variable in J2000, we are making it so that is now the x-axis. That's one, or at least we're making it some axis. We're taking the vector to the north pole and forcing it into the x-y plane, which should be fine. Um, and so honestly at this point, oh let's see, then we're taking the positions in the J2000 frame from Q, uh, converting them, and giving it into S rot. Uh, alrighty, I'm suspicious. Well, I'm not suspicious, the answers are wrong, so it's more than suspicion, I'm wrong. Um, so let's see if we can do position from Q to S. I guess we need to make sure our position from Q to S is correct. Sorry, our position from S to T is correct. And that these variables actually sort of add up to each other. Um, so let's do that, I guess. I mean, but if they don't, then we have a problem. And then we've, we've, we've tried to keep the same coordinate frame. So the fact that they're not the same would be very strange. But stranger things have happened at C. That's from Monty Python. I don't really know if that's true. So S to T. So let's look at this and see what this does. La 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 la. Okay. That looks like... So this should be T minus S. Not even close. Yeah, T minus S here is... Oh, hang on. Are these rotated? Oh, those are the rotated vectors. Sorry. Um, let's look at the original vectors and see if... Um, uh, see if S to T is the subtraction of them, which it should be. Uh, I might be confusing rotated and unrotated vectors. I don't think I am. That's, uh, that's a possibility, though. Which is why I'm getting such weird results. Um... Yeah, let's see if before translation uh, these are these are consistent with each other. Okay, so S to T would be S T minus whoa 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 this might be T to S. So if you're at S and you want to get to T, I have the subtraction in the wrong order. That shouldn't really have an effect on anything, but um, but it is bad, so I should probably fix that. So we, well, we actually have this T to S. So, um, Oh, actually, I think that's what we want. Um, let's go back to our diagram real quick. Our other diagram. Um, B for Barry. Um... That's actually the wrong one. But okay, that's fine. So we want the vector from, um, this is S, this is T. I guess we don't really care. Well, because we're, we're on the positive x-axis, let's say T to S. And I'm assuming again that our T and our S are, are defined the way I want them to be. Um, but we can check. Right, so the sun is going to be further away uh, and the the eclipsing object is going to be closer to us. So I do want this to the positive x-axis, which is t to 
to S, not S to T in this case, D to E, but S to T. All right, so it's minor error here, which should not have no effect on anything. Um, except making me rename my variables, which is fine. That's probably probably a good thing that we, we don't want to unrename the variables. Okay, so this is from T to S. We're going to make that the, the positive x-axis. We're going to make north in the xy plane, uh, you know, regardless. And now, let's see, it does look like this is um, doing what we want now, but let's go ahead and make sure I didn't break it. Oh, yeah, I did. Cool. Um, because I forgot to change uh, this uh, S to T to T to S. All right, one more time. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm just going crazy with this stuff, aren't I? Um, this is where search and replace would have been probably what I should have used in the first place, but I didn't. Okay, if this compiles, I'm going to BC get it because, uh, there we go. I'm going to BC get it before we do anything else. Meaning I'm going to push it to git. Uh, meaning I'm going to save it in my local git and also push it to, to GitHub. Um, because that is useful. Okay. Let's run it now. T to S. So if you're at T and you need to get to S, yes, good. I mean, these look correct. I mean, T is a very small value, so these are these are good. So now, the question is, after rotation, do these things now do what they're supposed to do? And they didn't last time, so I mean, there's no reason to believe they will now, because the changes I made don't really have that much of an effect on that. So we're expecting now... Um, um, that S to T, or T to S actually is going to be the positive x-axis. Um, and you know what? We could actually, even without creating a new vector, we could actually just print the subtraction. Um, but, I mean, we should be able to just see that, actually. I mean... Okay. Yeah, and we're not really getting a feel here for this being... Um, S rot's now on the x-axis, which, um, did we ask for that? Did we, why don't we ask for S to T to be on the x-axis? Uh, T rot is now on the, uh, not on, it's in the xy plane, but not on the x-axis. So this value here is the value that, um, should have a positive value of y, uh, because we did not change the origin. The only thing I'm thinking, well, no, this is a vector transformation, it shouldn't be able to change the origin. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, yes, I see what's wrong. Um, over here, we did look at the vector from t to s, but we're treating now t as the origin. So we can't really, really do that, unfortunately. Uh, we do need q to be the origin before we do the, the rotation. So sadly, we will have to do this. Okay. All right, so now we have... Um, we need the vector from t to... Well, it is still j2000, though. It should, should be the same. Um, so I guess I'm confused. Oh, I see what's wrong. Yeah, in here T is going to be the origin, so that's uh, that's bad, because Q is going to be the origin. We actually do need to change the. Um, it still should work. I, I'm going to go back and forth on this until I go crazy. Um, well, let's do it the right way then. Um, so we actually need to subtract these vectors s pause and t pause, and and put them back into another variable. Um, I'm just gonna it's gonna be to get s pause, t pause, and we put the we're gonna put the results in temp temporarily because I want to compare it to um, to what this gives us the t to s thing gives us. Um, because that is kind of strange. The t this should, I in this point, uh, doing this this way, temp and t to s should be identical, or if I've messed things up, the negative of each other. Uh, so let's do temp and 
And again, we're going to do something terrible here by returning zero. We probably should return minus one to indicate something that we're not, we're just testing. Um, T2S. And I guess this is going to be the temp variable. All right, so these should be the same. If they're not, I am confused. I, I, the only thing I see is maybe the origin somehow is screwing this up. Um. Oh, right, because over here, when I do north, I definitely need Q to be the origin. I think that's the problem. So I think up to here I'm fine. Uh, well, I don't know. I, that's, I'm going to babble inconsistent, incoherently for a sec. Whoa, 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 whoa. Temp undeclared first use this function. Okay. Let's just use one of the frickin' 10 billion vectors I've defined here. Q-temp? Yeah, let's just call it Q-temp, what the hell. That sort of is not correct. So, let's do it anyway, though. Okay. Nine billionth times the charm. I say that too often now. Okay. Okay, T to S and temp are very different variables. Um, I mean, they're not hugely different, but th this cannot be a round off error. So this is a good question. Why is this, ha oh, and this is, um, all right, so I do have a temp backwards. Let me go ahead and make temp correct real quick. Um, it's possible that if there are floating point errors, let's at least be consistent and get them in the correct direction. Okay. Yeah, it's not looking too good here. I mean, that's a 200 kilometer difference, 400 kilometer difference, and a 200 kilometer difference, which isn't big, but it shouldn't exist at all. I mean, that's, that's kind of weird. So what's, what's, um, why are these different? Um, I mean, here we're taking the position from Q to S and Q to T, subtract them. Here we're taking the position from T to S in the same frame. The only thing I can frickin' think of is this CN plus S crap. Um, it might be that, um, compensating for the speed of light uh, screws these up because from Q we're measuring the speed of light from both. So now I'm addicted with this problem. We're going to restore these to CN plus S, but if we put none in here and it works, I will be vaguely unhappy because that might mean that it is really the speed, because 200 kilometers is not a lot. I mean, it doesn't take light that long to travel. Okay. No, no, they're not even, that makes it worse. Oh, no, it doesn't. Hang on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The tiny difference is caused by the speed of light. Sorry, we meant to, I meant to highlight these two. That is amazing. I can't, I don't know how that results in such a huge difference um, in the end matrix, you know, in, in the rotated matrix. Um... I'm not, I really, it shouldn't, I mean, it really shouldn't, but um, let's find out if we use the correct matrix for our rotation, meaning the one as measured from Q, we get rid of this 300,000 kilometers, which is about how far light travels in one second error. Um, so here, instead of using T to S, we will use, um, oh God, called it Q temp. We will need to rename that. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and print out all the matrices and see if magic has happened. This will be the first time I've run into a light problem creating an error like this. New. So S rot and T rot, even with that matrix, is um, is not working properly. T to S versus, um, I guess we don't print out Q temp, do we? Um, oh, we do, Q temp. Right. 
Well, let's go ahead and restore CN plus S so we can break this even more. I just don't care. And this is going to be one of the few cases I'm going to order the to-do without ever having posted it to get. That's interesting. Why do I have a nun in there? Anyway. Um... Okay, let's do this. Um, and we see the temp and T2S are slightly different. S pause, T pause. Well, we actually want the rotated positions. Yeah, this is weird. The, the, the S pause should not be lining up with the X axis. There's something really, really strange there. Um, because we never asked that to happen with that matrix. Uh, we only want the S to T vector to line up with the X axis. So something wonky is going on here. I'm going to go ahead and push this to git, and then we're going to get rid of the uh, the computation we did that um, that that uses you know that uses the light time from s to t because we really are viewing from q, and we want to keep things like that. So let me go ahead and push this and then change it. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and get rid of, uh, well, T to S is okay, that can live. Um, position from Q to S and Q to T, and instead of calling this T temp, this will now become our T to S. Um, and we are not going to use this anymore, we're not going to do this. To J2000 North, we're still okay with that. Um, from T to S. This is fine. And so this is going to be T to S. Um, and I guess, I mean, T to S is the vector we're insisting becomes the X axis. Um, not Q to S. So I guess we should see what its transform position is too. Um, I mean, we're literally saying it has to be something. And do I have a Q-Rot in here? I probably do not. Um, let me just put in a temp temp so we can use it for right now. So let's go ahead and do that and see what, what it becomes after rotation. And if it doesn't become the x-axis, something is very wrong. Um, so s pause, two to t to s. And the only thing we need here is t to s rotated. In other words, after it's become um, when it should be lined up with the x-axis. And if that is not the case, we have something bad happening. And it might be that this is somehow messing with it. That I'm somehow um, giving it a special condition that 2vec can't handle. I don't really believe that's true, by the way, but that is a possibility. Okay. I wish I'd put it like some new lines between these. Um, as far as this, okay. T to S is this. What is the, um... So I actually should say T to S rot, which we're holding in temp, but... Um... This has not become the x-axis. I'm unhappy. Um... or even parallel to the x-axis, which, which is the x-axis. Okay, what's going on here? All right. Um, one is the x-axis. Is the vector defining a prince? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So axis definition is one. Okay, so that's the vector, then the index. I think I've got that right. Um, okay, why does that say uh, S pause? Because I'm a frickin' moron? Did I never change that? Oh no, oh! Flip! Okay, maybe I was redefining uh, the matrix because I had never gotten rid of that line. Someone should watch the video and tell me if I did that. I'm pretty sure that's a problem, because it, it's it behaving exactly like I did that. So now we should be all fine and dandy. 
Um, yeah. S rot and T rot are both in the uh, have the same Y value. Um, they have the same Z value. Oh yeah, because I've decided that. Um, well, hang on now. Can I do better than this? Can we insist that um, in addition to being um, in addition to having the same x value, can we insist that the um, the points s and t be in the same be in the um, x y plane? I think we can. Then we'd have to lose our little north pole trick, but I think I'm okay with that because I would much rather have s pause and and t pause remain within the uh, within the uh, within the xy frame. So screw this. Uh, x to y parallel and keeps s and it turns out t in xy plane. Okay. Let's see what that does. I probably should have saved this, huh? When it was working. <laughs> All right. Gorgeous. This is exactly what we want. S S rot T rot are exactly in the Z are exactly in same Y value, zero Z value, and obviously different X values. But they they're parallel to each other on the X plane. Okay, so I'm gonna definitely BC GitHub this before I forget. Although I guess technically I could go back to the video and watch what changes I make, but I hate watching my videos. Everyone hates watching my videos. If you're in the audience watching my videos right now, I don't know why you're doing it. Uh, and there does not there's appears one user who may or may not be real, which I don't care. Okay, um, so now, now we are back at this diagram here. Um, so we have the okay, good, 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 all good. So now what we want to do is um, we can calculate the, um, and I did something a little bit dumb here. Yes, I did. Um, yeah, I actually meant to draw the line between the um, sun's edge and the moon's edge. This is actually, the J has, it's going to be on the x-axis, obviously, because of the symmetry, but it's not going to necessarily be right at the, at the y-axis. The, the cone is not necessarily going to be there. So let's go ahead and edit this. Let's go ahead and figure out what the hell we're doing. Um, I want to keep playing with it. Hey. Uh, so this line here should be right there. Okay. Uh, that's still really too close. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, this is not looking too good now. We, we need to do it so it's like this, basically. The problem here is Jay is still way, way too close to the... Um, to the origin, so it looks confusing. So let's move C over here, let's move D over here, and then we can make our lines a little bit more, well that's going to put it past the, um, god damn it, no, I want to move J quite a bit to the right. Um, in fact, I think we should probably, can I still, I can still edit this diagram, right? For some reason I don't have all, all my, like, this is reload, which will reload I think the way it was. Um, edit details, move to, edit activity, what the hell did that do? So if I, can I now, like, do I have to spawn off of this or something? Can I no longer get the, uh, the lovely, um, menus that I had before? Let's see edit. Okay, that helps, but I don't have my lovely menus. I could copy and paste. Um, and now it's kind of whining at me as well, so I'm not happy. Let's go back here. Um, okay, so this is not great. This is exactly not what I meant. I meant we wanted the, the lines to go through the, the corners of the sun and the moon, and then it would necessarily not reflect, not reflect, it would not necessarily touch the, the, the z-axis. So we really need to, we really need to redo this, I think, actually. 
that's sort of a more realistic view there. Um, but I think at this point, that's not a realistic view. Ah! Why don't we just do a new one? I didn't realize that saving it was going to cause this much pain. Um, wow. I can't even... Uh, so I can, I can get back to here. And maybe from here I could do a load or something. Maybe that's the way I'm supposed to do it. Um, oh, there we go. Open. Oh, I can open other people's stuff. Presumably with their permission. Um, be opened. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. All right, so this was a, this was a mistake. Um, we're going to move C a little bit to the right here. And we're going to move D a little bit to the right here. So the moon remains the same size. Um, we are going to move this line. Wait a minute. It D, you get to stay where you are. Unless this line is defined. Yep, it's defined by D, so we need to get rid of this line. So let's go ahead and get rid of that line. Let's get rid of this line too. Actually, I think we should... Um, um, I don't even think we need J here, actually. So now we're going to create a new line that goes from F through D. There's an issue here that we're not going to... Uh, hey. I should be able to anchor it to D. Okay. Oh, now this is going to look really bad, but that's okay. And that goes from... What the hell? Be gone. From here, the top to the top. And we can go ahead and move J. No, no, I don't want to move. I want to move frickin' how? I want to move point. Nope, can't do it. Oh, actually, I guess I gotta go. I want to get rid of point J entirely. Um. So let's do this. So, so here through here. That's actually a lot better. Okay. The problem here is now, of course, we're we're missing the uh, with the we're not in the umbra. No point on Earth is in the umbra now. Um. I probably don't actually care because what we're doing isn't going to require that much sophistication, but I somehow would like to make this a little bit better, sorry. And not by creating a new line. I'm going to move the... I want to actually show a... Uh, somewhere on the Earth there's a total eclipse. So we'll move this guy here, we'll move this guy here. Uh, that's not really what I meant to do. We'll move C and D closer to the Earth. So we have a better eclipse. God damn it. We will have a partial eclipse if it kills me. There we go. Kind of. Jesus effing Christ. Okay. The umbral cone doesn't necessarily touch the y-axis is the point. Um, so when are we going to do some math with this? Well, unfortunately not right now because it is... I have to be uh, doing whatever the hell it is I do when I'm not streaming. I don't actually know what that is, um, which I should because I do it. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and stop for right now, but I think this is a this is a promising start here. Uh, we're going to also look at the the um, the question of the arc sine versus the arc tangent, uh, which I think we can do a, a fairly good job with. Um, and then we're going to sort of look at what we're basically going to be getting is we're doing formulas for the umbral line, and then there's actually something called the penumbral line where there's a partial eclipse, which will be F through J, G through D. Um, and and that'll, that's, um, in this case, it'll be the whole Earth, and which it often is, because the, the penumbral code is going to be um, always going to be uh, infinite in size. You can always go arbitrarily far in space and line yourself up so that the moon and the sun happen to be in line with each other. I mean, you'll be in a different position, but your distance doesn't matter. and. Once you get far enough, of course, the moon is just transiting the sun. It's not eclipsing the sun, but your distance at that point doesn't matter. And so the general idea that we're going to work with, which I'd hope to get further on today, uh, was we're going to look at the slopes of these lines. We're going to see uh, very simply how, when, you know, uh, where these lines touch the Earth, if at all. And then from there, we can determine uh, what portion of the Earth is within, uh, or planet, is within total eclipse and uh, penumbral or partial eclipse. Uh, as it turns out, there are some few odd cases, uh, not actually, there's several cases you get need to go through, 
but they're not terribly difficult cases. They, they turn out to be fairly, uh, they turn out to be fairly easy cases to deal with. Okay, thank you for watching the stream, and I should be back. Well, I'm going to say I should be back later today, but honestly, I don't know if I'm ever coming back. I could die, or I could just get sick to death of this whole thing. So I can't tell you when I'm going to be back. My plan is to be back later today in maybe two to three hours. Bye for now.